Now coming to a very important point, reciprocal changes in ECG in patients with ST segment elevation MI. Whenever someone gives you a ECG with ST segment elevation MI, with ST segment elevation in few leads, you will find ST segment depression in the other leads. Now in ECG where you are finding ST segment elevations with ST segment depressions, these ST segment depressions are basically reciprocal changes. They do not indicate that there is subendocardial ischemia going on in the heart with this transmural ischemia. No, it does not indicate that. If there is ST segment elevation in an ECG, that uh, ST segment elevation is actually causing a reciprocal change due to the current flow that results in ST segment depression in the opposite lead. Now it will make more sense when you look at the ECGs. Now remember, as we said in our previous video that lead to 3 AVF look at the inferior aspect of the heart and lead 1 AVL and V6 look at the lateral aspect of the heart. So these leads are actually lying down like this and whenever there is ST segment elevation in one of set of the leads there will be ST segment depression in the other set. If there is ST segment elevation in lead 2, 3 AVF in the opposite leads, in lead 1 AVL V6, you will see ST segment depression. And that ST segment depression does not indicate subendocardial ischemia. That ST segment depression is called as a reciprocal change. Now, now why does these leads show ST segment depression? Why is there ST segment depression? Basically, the electrical activity of the heart is altered in myocardial infarction in such a way that in, if the current is flowing in the direction of certain leads, they, those leads will show positive deflection and those leads will be showing ST segment elevation. And the leads that are present opposite to them, they will show an opposite finding, they will show ST segment depression because current is flowing away from those. So actually this is because of the alteration of the current flow in the heart that appears as a reciprocal change. Now if lead 2, 3 AVF are looking at the inferior aspect of the heart and there is a myocardial infarction affecting these leads and there is ST segment elevation in lead 2, 3 AVF. What you will see on ECG is that there will be ST segment depression in the opposite leads. There will be ST segment depression in lead 1 AVL V6. And this ST segment depression in these leads does not indicate that there is subendocardial ischemia going on in the lateral aspect of the heart. No, ST segment depression in the presence of ST segment elevation does not indicate subendocardial ischemia. This ST segment depression in the presence of ST segment elevations indicate that this is a reciprocal change and reciprocal change occurs because there is problem with the electrical conduction of the heart and that, that ST segment depression occurs because there is abnormality in the current flow that is perceived by ECG as ST segment depression. So whenever an ECG is showing ST segment elevation and with that there are ST segment depressions in some lead, ignore those leads because those leads are actually showing reciprocal change due to alteration of the current flow. That is the take home point of reciprocal changes. Now we will solve some ECGs and then you will have an idea what reciprocal change means. Now let's find ST segment elevation. We do not have ST segment elevation in lead 1. We do have ST segment elevation in lead 2. We do have ST segment elevation in lead 3, we have ST segment elevation in lead AVF and we do not have any ST segment elevation in any of the precordial leads. So ST segment elevation is present in lead 2, 3, AVF. Now if you look at the opposite leads, if you look at 1, AVL, V6, V5, you will find ST segment depression. ST segment depression in the presence of ST segment elevation does not indicate subendocardial ischemia. It is just a reciprocal change due to the abnormality of the current flow. Since the current is flowing in the direction of these leads 2, 3 AVF, so there is positive deflection, there is ST segment elevation and since the current is flowing opposite from these leads, since the current is flowing away from these leads, you will see ST segment depression. And that ST segment depression is not due to subendocardial ischemia. That is the reciprocal change. Very simple, very easy.
Now what you should do is that you should pause the video, look at the CCG, first of all find the ST segment elevations in few leads and then look at the opposite leads. In opposite leads you will find ST segment depression and that ST segment depression is the reciprocal change. Now coming to the answer, if you look at lead 1, we do have an ST segment elevation. In lead 2, lead 3, we do not have any ST segment elevation. We do have an ST segment elevation in AVL. Then going to AVF, V1, V2, we do have an ST segment elevation in V2, in V3, we do have it in V4, and in V5, we also have ST segment elevation. In V6, we do not have any ST segment elevation, it's not very prominent. So if you look at the leads, we have ST segment elevation in 1, AVL, V2, V3, V4, V5, the leads that are lying over here. Now what are the leads that are lying opposite to it? 2, 3 AVF, the inferior leads. In the inferior leads, what you will see is that there will be ST segment depression. If you look at lead 3, if you look at lead 3, if you look at lead 2, if you look at lead AVF, it's very prominent in lead 3 and AVF, there is ST segment depression and this ST segment depression is the reciprocal change. It does not indicate subendocardial ischemia. So, ST segment depression in the presence of ST segment elevation is a reciprocal change. Now, we will solve some ECGs by six step ECG interpretation method. Now, we have already discussed all these six steps in our previous videos. We talked about step one, general impression, step two, calibration, step three, rhythm interpretation, step four, QRS assessment, step five, hypertrophies, and step six, ischemia. Now, we will complete, finish our six step method today. Now, if you want to if you want to learn these previous six steps, I have given the link of those videos in the description. The link of that playlist is in the description. If you look at the general impression, the general impression is that there is, it is an ugly ECG. There are some more changes in these ECG that are not normal. If you look at the calibration marker, it is two large boxes tall, one large box wide. So it is a normal standard calibration. Let's look at the rhythm. If you look at the rhythm, let's calculate the rate. Between the QRS complexes, we have one, two, three and almost 4, so 300, 150, 100 and 75 beats per minute. Now going to rhythm interpretation, in the rhythm interpretation, let's calculate the rate of this ECG. If you calculate the rate of this ECG, we have between the QRS complexes, let's count the number of large boxes, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, so 300, 150, 175, 75 beats per minute, sinus rhythm at the rate of 75 beats per minute. Let's look at the R wave progression, let's look at the R wave progression in the precordial leads, we have uh, V1, V2 should be negatively deflected, the QRS complexes should be negatively deflected and it is, they are negatively deflected. Let's look at V5, V6, they should be positively deflected and they are positively deflected. So it's a normal R wave progression. Let's look at the axis. For the axis, we will have to look at the lead 1 and lead AVF. Lead 1 and AVF, the QRS should be pointing upward. That is the normal. Now the QRS is pointing upward in lead 1, it is also pointing upward in lead AVF. So it is a normal axis. Let's look for the bundle branch blocks. Let's look for the M wave in V1, V2, V5, V6. We do not have any M wave, so bundle branch blocks are absent. Let's look for hypertrophy. We do not have any signs of hypertrophy. The tall R waves, those things are absent over here. The R wave progression is also normal. So hypertrophies are not there. Let's look for ischemia. There are ischemic changes. Let's first find ST segment elevations. Then we'll find the reciprocal ST segment depressions. And then we'll find the Q waves. If you look at lead one, we have ST segment elevation. We have ST segment elevation in lead AVL. We have ST segment elevation in lead V1 v2 v3 v4 v5 so there are prominent st segment elevation changes in these leads v v1 to v6 1 and avl these are showing st segment elevation let's look at st segment depression now since these are the lateral leads you should go for st segment depression in the inferior leads lead 2 3 avf should be having st segment depression and they are showing st segment depression. So lead 2, 3 AVF is showing ST segment de uh, depression. Let's look for the Q wave. The Q wave is absent over here. The Q wave is prominent in V1 and V2. That is the pathological Q wave that is that shows uh, infarcted tissue in the heart. So Q wave is present in V1, V2. Now let's complete the rhythm interpretation. It is basically a sinus rhythm at the rate of 75 beats per minute anteroseptal 
lateral wall mi with reciprocal changes in the inferior leads and pathological q waves in v1 and v2 now this is the beauty of the six step method where you can never miss out a single thing when you go in this systemic manner when you follow the six steps properly you will never miss out a single finding in an ecg now coming to the second ecg now what you should do is that you should pause the video and try to solve this ECG yourself. Till the time you don't solve these ECGs yourself, you won't learn anything. Take a piece of paper, solve these ECGs, make the wrong answers, but try to learn these ECGs by six step method. Now let's solve this ECG. What's the general impression? The general impression is that it is an ugly rhythm. Let's look at the calibration. The calibration marker has been cut off, uh, but we'll say that it is a standard calibration marker, two large boxes tall and one large box wide. Now let's calculate the rate we have between the RR interval we have 1, 2, 3 and almost 4 large boxes so 300, 150, 175 sinus rhythm at the rate of 75 beats per minute. Let's look for the R wave progression for the R wave progression V1 and V2 should be negatively deflected V5, V6 should be positively deflected that is the normal R wave progression so that is the case in this ECG. R wave progression is good. Let's look for the excess. For the excess, we'll have to look at lead 1 and lead AVF. In a normal excess, both of these should be pointing upwards and they are pointing upwards. The QRS complexes are positively deflected and it is a normal excess. Let's look for bundle branch blocks. For bundle branch blocks, we will have to look at lead uh, V1, V2, look for M wave, look at the M wave in V5, V6. We do not have any M wave, so there are no bundle branch blocks. Let's look at the P waves for hypertrophy, atrial hypertrophy. The P waves look normal. They are small, symmetric. They are not tall. If they were tall, we would have called it a right ventricular hypertrophy. If they were notched or humped, we would have called it a left ventricular hypertrophy. But that is not the case. Now let's look for the uh, hypertrophy in the ventricles. Uh, for the hypertrophy in the ventricle, you will have to calculate the, look at the S wave over here and the R wave over here. I'll, I've talked about uh, hypertrophy in detail in my previous video. You can check out that video, how to look for left, left ventricular hypertrophy. This ECG is actually showing possible left ventricular hypertrophy. Now the important point is ischemia. In the ischemia, let's look for ST segment elevations. In the ST segment elevations, we have ST segment elevation in lead 2, lead 3 and lead AVF is showing ST segment elevation. We do not have ST segment elevation. We have some ST segment elevation in V4, V5 and V6. So these leads are also showing ST segment elevation. So we have ST segment elevation in lead 2, 3 AVF, V5, V6. That is in lateral wall. Now let's look for ST segment depression. We have ST segment depression in AVL. There is ST segment depression present in AVL. We do not have any ST segment depression. So AVL is showing ST segment depression. Now let's look for the Q wave. The pathological Q waves are present in lead 3. Look at the beautiful pathologic Q waves in lead 3. The Q waves in lead uh, other leads we do not have any q waves in the other leads now this v1 v2 the first notch is positive the first bump is positive of the qrs that is the r wave so there is no q wave present this is the s wave that you see if the first deflection is positive that is the r wave and after that that is the s wave so we have q wave pathological q waves in lead 3 the interpretation of this ECG will be that it is a sinus rhythm at the rate of 75 beats per minute with inferior lateral wall mi with reciprocal changes in avl and pathological Q waves in lead 3 with possible left ventricular hypertrophy. You can never miss out a single finding in ECG if you follow the six step method. That's the importance of solving ECG in a systemic manner. Now coming to this ECG, pause the video, try to solve this, this ECG yourself. Zoom in if you are looking at a mobile phone because I know it will be difficult for you to look at, look at this ECG on a mobile phone. Zoom in. Uh, and solve this ECG yourself. If you go for the general impression, the general impression is that this ECG looks ugly. There are ST segment elevations by even simply looking at it. The calibration, we do not have a calibration marker over here, so we cannot comment on the calibration. Sorry for this calibration uh, written over here, standard. Let's go for the rhythm interpretation. The rhythm interpretation, let's calculate the rate. Between the QRS complexes, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, almost 4. So 300, 150, 100 and 80 75 to 80 beats per minute sinus rhythm at the rate of 75 beats per minute we have the p wave so it's the sinus rhythm let's look for the r wave progression r wave progression 
v1 v2 should be negatively deflected v5 v6 should be positively deflected they are not exactly negatively deflected they are somewhat positively deflected but they, there is predominantly negative deflection so we'll call it a good r wave progression although it's not a properly good one that we discussed pre in, in the previous videos let's look for the axis deviation for the axis deviation you will have to look at lead one and avf and one is pointing upwards and look at the avf the qrs complex is pointing downwards so the, they are leaving each other if one is QRS complex is pointing upward and the other QRS complex is pointing downwards is in A1 and AVF. So they are leaving each other and when they leave that is left axis deviation. If they are reaching out for each other, if the one is negatively deflected and AVF is positively deflected, then that is the, they are reaching out for each other that is right axis deviation. So this is the left axis deviation. If you look for the bundle branch blocks, let's look for the M wave in V1, V2, V5, V6, we do not have any. So there is no bundle branch block present. Let's look for hypertrophies. For hypertrophies, let's look at the atrial hypertrophies. Let's look for the P wave. P wave is normal. P wave is not peaked. P wave is not notched. So there is no atrial hypertrophy. Let's look for the ventricular hypertrophy. For ventricular hypertrophy, you will have to look at these leads V1, V2, V5, V6. Apply the scholar Leon criteria. But these, uh, the QRS complexes are not very tall. So by simply looking at it, we do not find any uh, ventricular hypertrophy. Now coming to ischemia, let's look for ST segment elevation. L let's look at lead 1, no ST segment elevation. Lead 2 is showing ST segment elevation, subtle ST segment elevation. Lead 3 is also showing a very prominent ST segment elevation. AVR is not showing anything, AVL, AVF is showing ST segment elevation. So we have ST segment elevation in lead 2, 3, AVF. In lead V1, V2, V3, we do not have any ST segment elevation. V4, we do not have any ST segment elevation. V5, V6 is showing a T wave inversion, somewhat ST segment elevation, but not very prominent. So if you count them, it's fine. If you don't count them, that's, that will also be fine. If you simply say that it is an inferior wall MI, it will be fine if you, if you label 2, 3 AVF because there is a prominent ST segment elevation in these leads. So it's an inferior wall MI. So we have ST segment elevation in 2, 3 AVF, ST segment depression, let's look for ST segment depression, uh, lead 1 is showing ST segment depression, now 2, 3 AVF, 1 AVL are in the opposite direction, so 1 AVL and we have ST segment depression in V2, we have ST segment depression, so we have ST segment depression in 1 AVL and V2 leads. Let's look for the pathological Q waves. Let's look for the pathological Q waves. This is the pathological Q wave in lead 2. In lead 3, we have a very prominent pathological Q wave. Very prominent. Pathological Q wave is present in lead AVF. Let's look for pathological Q wave in the precordials. We do not have any. So the pathological Q waves are present in lead 2, 3 AVF. Now coming to the interpretation. It is a sinus rhythm at the rate of 75 beats per minute with a left axis deviation with an inferior wall MI with reciprocal changes in 1 AVL and pathological Q waves in 2, 3 AVF. So that is how you solve an ECG. By six step method, you can never miss out a single finding in ECG. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and make sure to watch my previous videos on a six step method as well as watch my videos on rhythm interpretation i have talked about sinus blocks i have talked about atrial flutter atrial fibrillation ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation as well as their managements in detail in a separate playlist appears on ecg what is reciprocal change the leads that are lying opposite to each other one if one set of leads is showing elevation the other set of leads will be showing depression and that depression does not indicate that there is subendocardial ischemia it indicates that this is a reciprocal change the important point of reciprocal change and the end we solve some ECGs. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on ECG interpretation made easy and emergency medicine lectures. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.